He's a world-renowned chef, a restaurateur, an author, a TV personality, a superhero, a dad, a husband, and he stop also it, is so it, famous it, he has his right. own personal umbrella holder. That's right. right? That's and what I do. You know you've really made it. You know you've arrived when. When Mark Stein is your umbrella holder who also happens to be famous. It's pretty impressive. I'm just getting close to the meat. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and he's opening yet another amazing, much-anticipated eatery right here in Los Angeles. Please welcome back celebrity chef Curtis Stone. Yay! Thank you. What an I'm, introduction. Well, you know what? Well, listen, you live up to it. Good. You and your brother are opening yet another restaurant mm -hmm. named Gwen. Yes. Named after your other grandma, because you already have Maud. Right. Oh. What um, role did your grandmother Gwen play in your love of food? You know, she was a very simple um, woman. She grew up on a farm. They grew their own veggies. They had their own animals. And I think that primitive style cooking, she used to cook a lot over wood. She taught me that, and I still remember the flavor of that beautiful, smoky, mm. delicious meat. Um, oh, there she is, my Aww. darling granny. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so she sort of, you know, in honor of her, I thought, well, let's open a butcher shop and a beautiful meat-centric restaurant. And it's very, Perfect. it's like the quintessential farm-to-table. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't get more farm to table than going in your backyard and catching your chicken. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're not going to have chickens on the parking lot, and we're going to buy the meat from It's pretty chicken. close. I think yeah. we should have one named Mark, too, don't you think? I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. No. no. We don't want to eat a chicken named Mark. What? Wait. Say. Yes, uh, we do yes, want to eat chicken named Mark. I, yes, yes. Okay. Well, this we... is a no. Okay. This is a yes. Okay, okay. yes, yes, and we want to eat a chicken named Mark. Okay. Now, your restaurant okay. is, is based around meat and fire-based cooking. What does that mean? So, fire-based cooking is just that. It's cooking over coals or wood as opposed to gas, right? Because you get this beautiful smokiness and this delicious, mm -hmm. intense That's what we were flavor. just talking about. We walked out here. We could smell that. And we right. Went, oh. It reminds yeah. you of being young, yeah. like yeah. when you had barbecues with your family. Yeah. Right? It's so good. So, I thought I'd bring you a few cuts from our butcher shop this morning that are a little different than um, what you're used to. A pork ribeye chop on the bone, right? You've Beautiful. all seen that before. Over here, I've got a lamb saddle, which we've got the two loins, the fillets in the middle, and then we've tied it together. So it grills as this perfect little saddle. This is the spinalis, which is actually this piece of a ribeye. So you know how the ribeye has two muscles. It's got the yeah. eye, and then it has the, the sort of Right cap. on the outer part. This, this is the spinalis of the beef. It is the most delicious cut of beef you've ever mm. eaten. Yeah, because isn't ribeye the best part? So this is the oh, best yeah. of the the best. the best of the best. And then I've got a pork secreto, which is the secret cut of the pork shoulder, oh, which is super <laughs> super tender and delicious. Is that the pork secreto? That's the pork secreto. There's so, some over here. Can we can these guys? Yes, in? please, you know, guys. Eat. Oh, I can no, no, How long do we have to wait? Okay, no, no, no. Truthfully, Take Chef. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. One of the reasons that I was so excited you were here is that I'm good in the kitchen and I'm okay on the grill, mm -hmm. but my dad was always the grill master. My yeah, husband is now the grill guy. Right. I would like to learn to get better on the grill so I can maybe impress him over the summer because, you know, summer's all about grilling out. Okay, so I've got a couple of really simple secrets for you. Okay. A tiny bit of oil on, on the surface of the meat. No oh, good, more. okay. Don't oil the grill at all. All right. Okay, you want a really hot grill because you want to develop this beautiful crust. So you see how I'm oh. dropping my um, veal... Uh, uh, loin on there, my lamb. So you want to hear that sizzle, right? Okay. So you need a hot section of the grill. Yeah. And then you'll see how I've got all my coals on one side here and the other side not. That. That's because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it really yeah. hot and then I'm going to move it over there and cook it slowly. So that's an important part. When do you move them? You move once you've got a beautiful golden crust. So we're going to give it 60 seconds, turn it. If we've developed a nice golden crust within that 60 seconds on each side, we move it to the other side and cook it really slow. See, this is what Mark and I were actually discussing. We were always taught that you put it on the grill, you let it cook on one side, and then you flip it after four minutes or whatever the amount, right. depending on the and thickness of that. What do you mean? And you'll get a decent result that way, but if you turn it every 60 seconds, what you're effectively doing is slowing down the cooking because you're cooking it from one side and then the other side. So it's the, the temperature, you know when you get a steak and it's gray on the outside and red in the middle, yeah. that yeah. chewy red? Yeah, no good. You want it to be pink all the way through. So this is the yeah. way that you get that. By tempering the meat, that's the first part. You bring it out of the fridge like 60, uh, 30 to 60 minutes before you before you start cooking it right mm -hmm. so you let the temperature of the meat rise ever so slightly then you cook it hot and then and then you slow it down so you see after 60 seconds oh, we're already that. getting already that get caramelization but well, wait can you explain the history behind this because men for some reason have mm -hmm. seemed to and I, and I love it have a reputation for being grill masters. Yeah, right. exactly. Whether we are or not, 
people and even like and you I say, believe you, it. You, 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 John's that way. Yeah, right? I believe that he's the best on the grill because he says he is. <laughs> just like every other man, I go, well, you're great right on the grill. Kind of, that's right. We take what does that come from? Like men just been known to. I mean, we have cooked around a fire chunks of meat since the beginning of time. Yeah. You know, that's the very start of cooking, right? In fact, at, at Gwen, what we're going to do is a thing called asador, where we put a big cross up and we put a whole animal on that cross and we cook it around the fire. Wow. You know, that's that's the real primitive sure. beginning of cooking. And you can impart so much flavor that way and, and you can have so much success by cooking sure. in that way. So um, that's that's sort of uh, why, are men the, why do men take credit for it? So speaking of flavor, I noticed that you, after the olive oil, all you did was put these three different salts on them. Right, a little salt. So I brought three salts to show you. This is a Molden sea salt, which are nice big grains of mm -hmm. salt out of the UK. Murray River sea salt out of Australia. That's a pink salt out of a river, so mm -hmm. more minerally f flavor. And my favorite, the Sal de Garonne, uh, comes out of a, a special part of France. That it's these beautiful little crystals that form naturally. Um, that they and it, it just tastes of the ocean. It's so good. And they all taste a little different. Yeah, they do. And then did you put all three on different are all not oh all the God. same. I didn't. I just or brought them mean? along for okay. a bit of a It just tastes like the ocean. Do, is, doesn't it? You can't go to the Mediterranean, but I can bring it to you. <laughs> Don't you feel like you're at the beach somewhere? Wow. Isn't that great? <laughs> is that a seagull that just flew overhead? <laughs> go, go. <laughs> then, okay, so after the meat is done, then what do we do? Right, so you see how I've got this well, nice golden crust going on, and then I move it over to the other oh. side, and then you let it cook nice and slowly. Okay. Okay. So the, the next thing is you bring it off the grill, and you have right. to let it rest. So this steak has been resting for about half the time it took to cook, so if it's on the grill for 10 minutes, you let it rest for five. Wait, 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 wait. What happens during that time? Well, it gets, um, the meat gets very tired, so it needs a rest. Before right, it's exhausted. <laughs> you, what, what happens is the temperature actually drops a little. If you cut that piece of meat straight off the grill, it'll just lose a lot of its juice. Where okay. this way, the actual, so you'll see this. It'll be beautiful and pink. Mm -hmm. And is it still cooking? It'll still be nice and juicy. Yes, so oh. it's a thing called carryover cooking. Oh my God. See how there's hardly any juice? Oh, it's so good. You guys, it's yeah. delicious. It's so good. Yeah. Have I went taste. back for so, seconds. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I've always worried about it. Um, <laughs> Cooling off, and I'd want you know, like the kids. Right. Yeah, it's so hot. Oh my gosh, Mark it. here. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't need to. Uh, it won't lose its temperature in, oh in just a few God. minutes. So that's the spinalis, and you're like, why did I ever bother with a ribeye? That's the that's the best part of the ribeye. That's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. What's the long way to cut? Um, now, the, a lot of people do this. They'll cut on an angle. You uh -huh. don't want to do that. You cut straight right. across. Why? Because the grains of the meat are running this way, right? Mm -hmm. So you effectively either want to cut it like that or like that. So you cut with the grain as opposed to against it. So there's, just... There's, there's, do you know what I always get worried about? Maybe you have a tip for this. I was, about the steaks I buy are about that thick. Yeah. I'm always scared they're not going to be cooked in the center, so I end up taking a knife and going in like this, and then I know I get all the, I take the juice take out. The what juice do I do out. to make sure it's cooked? So really? the, the key is temper it, bring it out half an hour before you cook it. Once it's cooked, you know, and there's a little trick. If you put your thumb and your finger together and feel that part of your yeah. hand, that's rare. Next finger is medium rare. Mm -hmm. Next finger is medium well, and the last finger is well done. See how that tightens up? Yes. It's the so same the as the doneness of, of, of the meat. If you put, you taste. Um, one last question. Yeah. You bring it out. If you don't let it get to room temperature, what does that eff effectively do to the meat mm -hmm. when it hits the grill? Well, it just means that you're cooking it from cold to hot. So the, the center of the meat, the center of the steak beautiful. will still be quite cold. So it'll mm. still be a little chewy. So it's much better if you do let it temper. And also when you let it rest, that carryover cooking will continue Can to penetrate too. all the way. Let me tell you something, after having a big meal like this, we're gonna need to rest 